G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today we're going to be looking at uh, drill chucks, or a drill chuck from Banggood. And uh, basically, I've got a drill chuck and an arbor from Banggood, and it, uh, it looks like this. Now, why a keyless drill chuck? Because I'm not really a big fan of keyless drill chucks. Well, they are actually handy for some jobs. Uh, on a lathe, particularly if you want something that's fast acting, where you want to say, um, swap over, say, centre drill bits, I find it very good, very handy for that. So I use this old, uh, well it's not, a, it's old but it's virtually unused, uh, Rome chuck that came off of one of my uh, big drills, Atlas Copco drill. It's had very little work because it's got a ratchet locking mechanism which is a bugger of a thing to use when you've got work gloves on. So it's had you know, virtually very little action. So I use it on the lathe and I've swapped over to a key chuck on the Atlas Copco. So yeah, this is what I would normally use for centre drills. Uh, and of course I use collets for normal drill bits. Lately I've been using this in the drill press because I've been doing a lot of small capacity drilling. Now this is a 13mm chuck, we well, actually got a 16mm I think. And this is the chuck that I originally fitted into the pillar drill, my big old Royco Taiwanese drill press. And I swapped over the chuck when I bought it many, many years ago because I bought it second hand like I buy a lot of stuff, you know, my tools, a lot of it second hand. And at that time I bought a 3 quarter inch, that's, that's 20mm chuck thinking oh the, you know that'd be good the extra size would be a great way to go why buy a poxy little 13 mil one when a three quarter inch 20 mil would be a lot a lot better well yes and no it really wasn't wasn't a smart thing to do really looking back on it because even though it's a bigger heavier chuck the problem is that your drill sizes pretty much all stop at 13 mil or half inch you know if you go and buy drills for regular use I mean, you can get bigger drills, but they're a bit uncommon, really. Most of the drills you buy are half inch, 13 mil, and then they go small shank. You know, if you want to go larger, well, then they'll retain that same shank size, so they step into small shank drills. So three quarter inch is really a waste of money. And you think, oh yeah, but you know, it might be handy. You might want to use it. Well, I have used it over the years to put big end mills in at times, just to bottom out, square off the bottom of a drill hole or something like that. Very rare. And the downside with this is it won't go below uh, 3 sixteenths. You know, you have to swap the, swap over the, the chucks. So yeah, if you're thinking about buying a, a drill chuck, I think just forget about the three quarter inch. It's, it's really a pretty pointless exercise when it's all summed up. Anyway, so how good is this Banggood chuck? And why did I buy it? Well, I bought it because of this problem with this drill, uh, drill chuck and as I used on the lathe I wanted another one of these keyless chucks that I can swap over on the drill press so that's where it will be used on the drill press. So let's have a look at it and see what we've got. So here's what we've got now this is supposed to be a ball bearing chuck heavy duty. Now Banggood have a big range of these chucks they all look very similar and they vary a bit in price I get the impression they might all be ball bearing in this particular design. I'm not sure. When you read the description, some say ball bearing and some say special tightening um, pressure system. And, and I reckon they're all pretty much the same. And this is a uh, J6, JT6 um, tang on these. So they've sent me a JT6 Morse two so I can put it into the drill press. So yeah let's open this up and just see what it looks like. It's supposed to be a high, you know high carbon steel. <laughs> One of their ads actually says it's alloy, you know, I mean an alloy chuck. I do I actually I have seen alloy small alloy chucks for lathes but never a drill chuck. So yeah I pretty much bet and the weight of it yeah it's 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 gonna be steel. So we'll crack it open and have a look. Uh, 
wrapped in plastic. Now, it just says keyless drill chart ISO 9001 MT2 JT6 model. No indication of who made it. Yeah. Right. Now the the room I've got, as I said, has got this it's got this locking mechanism. It's got a ratchet locking me mechanism on it, which is a really painful thing to use. In fact I think Rome pretty much did away with this idea. Where, you know, they put the ratchet lock on so that they won't unscrew when you're using hammer drills. But the problem is if you're out in the field or you're wearing work gloves, it's almost impossible to get the thing to release. Uh, really annoying, so I would never buy one with a ratchet stop, you know, ratchet lock on that. You know, if that hadn't come with the drill that I bought an Atlas Copco, I would never have had that chuck. It is a nice chuck; it's beautifully made, but yeah, that ratchet lock, bah, terrible. So this is just a plain, just a plain type. It's it's quite heavy, and uh, yeah, let's see what it's got on the jaws. So it's got. Yeah, similar. So it's very similar in the jaw shape to the Atlas Copco, although they have recessed the, um, the jaw slightly on the sides. Pretty heavy duty compared to the Atlas. Yeah, let's see if I can find a maker's name on it anywhere. No, it just says. 1 to 13 mil B16, there's no, ma no manufacturer's name on there. Oh, here's the Tang. Yeah, it looks well made, very nice finish on it. Yeah, a little burr there on it, I can feel with my fingernail. That'll have to be taken off before you we insert it. So that needs a, a polish. Yep, see that mark there? You hear it catching my fingernail? That's not... To good, that shouldn't be there. Apart from that, the rest of it's all okay, so that'll have to be deburred before we can put this together. Okay, she's all deburred. I just used a bit of wet and dry on that with a bit of kerosene, and that's brought it up quite okay. It's taken the little raised section off. So now it's time to put it together. Now, I've seen lots of videos on doing this, you know, people make half hour videos on putting these things together, but really, it's a simple exercise. All you have to do is wind your jaws back. So, you're right, they're back. And then you clean out the, uh, let's feel inside first. No, oh, that feels good. Yeah, that's nice. No burrs in there. So now we clean it out with acetone, where the um, JT6 taper goes in, and then we clean the tang with acetone as well. And then it's a simple process to put it together. I'll show you how it goes. Okay, we're all cleaned up. Now it's just a matter of insert like so. And then just give it a good belt. Job done. Simple as that. Now, when you put it in the drill press, then you'll, once again, as I said, wind these jaws back. And just give it a smack on the end with a block. Put a piece of wood on there and give it a smack on the end, up into the Morse uh, taper in the spindle with a quill uh, with a hammer and they'll seat it totally and utterly but uh, I've seen people put them on the bench and whack them on the top you know you don't have to do that if you look in fact if you look at the uh, I think it's Grizzly they've done a video on how to put these together and they, they, they showed the correct way to do it this is the correct way to compare these chucks all on their own uh, tapers, they're all Morse 2, uh, they're all JT6 type. I'll take some measurements off of my old um, 
Taiwanese drill press, my Royco, and that's actually pretty accurate. It's got a tiny bit of run out in it. But I mean, nothing's perfect in life. But overall, it's a little bit of a good comparison because any run out that is in the drill press will be a constant throughout each of the each of the uh, uh, the tests we do, unless it's a compensating error, of course, which which can happen. Um, but overall, I don't think it's enough to really uh, matter. And if there's any significant run out. Uh, you'll see it for sure. So let's get on with some testing. All right, let's check the run out in the old Royco drill press I've got. Made in Taiwan from the 1970s. Done a lot of work. I bought it from a factory before I got it. They used to make bull bars with this old girl. And that has got to be said to be pretty damn good run out reading. Less than 0 0.02. 0 0.02, 0 0.03 at the most. Pretty impressive. Okay, so we know the drill press is good. Right, first off we'll measure right out in the Rome chuck. And I've got a high speed steel injection moulding former there, which is very, very uniform. And we'll turn it by hand in the uh, old Royco drill press. See what we get. Yeah, there's some run out in this old drill press, I know. So that looks like 0 0.07 to me. Oh, close to that anyway. Maybe 0 0.065. All right, we'll swap over the chucks and see how the uh, Banggood one goes in the same situation. Okay, so now I've got the Banggood chuck in the drill press. It's got a match or beat 0 0.065 on the roam. Let's see what we get. So it's got more than twice as much run out as the Rome. 0.16. Mmm. So that's a big difference. So it's got 0.1 more run out. Right, let's check the Jacob's Chuck against the others now and see how that performs. Point one one. So there you have it. The Rome is the most accurate, the Jacobs is second, and the Banggood is last. The test indicator does not lie. So does it actually grip? Well, I put a half inch high speed steel drill in, good quality one. Fill it up fair. And got some mild steel. I'll we'll spin it at 465 and see what happens.
that seems okay. It did slip a fraction at one point there. Let's try and undo it now, see if it's jammed up or not. Far out. Oh, shit. That's the trouble with keyless, they can lock on like this one has. We really need a, a wrench to get this off. Yeah, you can see that really locked on hard. Uh, I mean, I had to use a C wrench to get that undone. So, we'll repeat the exercise again. It certainly does tighten up all right. I mean, this hasn't been pre-drilled. This is just uh, straight in. There's no, there's no hole in there. So I'll just do it up. I'll try it again. putting a fair old load on it, stalled the lathe, and it didn't slip, it didn't slip. But once again, to undo it, oh, yep, can't move it, you're going to have to use a, a C-spanner once again on it. This is the one from my ER32. So yeah, you won't undo this thing by hand if you... Uh, um, using large drills, big load. I mean, it does lock on really well, which is a good thing, but they should give you uh, a C-spanner or a single point wrench for this type of chuck because, yeah, that's what can happen. I haven't had the Roam do that, but obviously the way this thing operates, it, you know, the more load on it, the more it pulls up, the tighter it pulls up. I mean, that's the way keyless chucks really work, but some are easier to undo than others. All right, let's put the Rome in and see if we can undo the Rome. Okay, here's the Rome in the same situation. Okay, okay that was a fair load. Let's see if we can undo the Rome by hand. Easy. See that? Piece of cake. So that's the difference, you know. I mean, this is a good system. I've never had a trouble, uh, never had a problem undoing it by hand. It's only the ratchet stop on it, that, that locking device, which is a pain in the butt. But as a chuck to use, it's very simple to use, and yeah, it doesn't lock on. And as you saw, the Banggood one did really tighten up severely. Okay, so let's move on. So just a final look at these, I'll compare the slop in the jaws to see if that's where the issue is. The Rome hasn't got much at all. It's fairly uniform. The Jacob is much the same, slightly more slop than the Rome. And the Banggood one. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad slop that. I mean that's definitely look at that. It shouldn't be as sloppy as that. And I think that's where probably some of the actual issues may be that the machining on, on this isn't as good where it counts. And that was borne out in the test results we just looked at where obviously Rome was well out in front, Jacobs was in the middle, and Banggood was last. But I mean, even though the run out's there, it's still within acceptable limits, I think, for a drill press or, yeah, as such. But it's a classic case of you get what you pay for, and if you want quarterly, top quarterly, get a roam. Jacob's in the middle, and unfortunately, Banggood is last. But once again, as I said, it's thoroughbreds versus general hacks. OK, well, that's it from me. I've been... Um, as honest as I can be on this, as always, and even though products may look the same, 
all look similar, they're not all the same. Okay, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed it, got something out of it. And yes, the links to the, the Banggood product are in the video description and the pricing. So, yeah, they got a range of chucks. And, well, go and have a look and make your own mind up. But that's it from me. Until next time, see you around. Cheers.